Welcome to City First Church and Happy New Year's. My name is Ryan League and I am so glad that you're kicking off this year with us. Now, I'm probably supposed to tell you that 2023 is your year. Like I'm supposed to say that, right? But I think we stopped saying that in 2020 because you just never know what a year can bring. But I think we've all been through a lot over the last couple of years that it really just puts us in a pretty interesting place trying to figure out what our posture should be to kick off this brand new year. Because what I know about you and what I know about me is that we have goals in some area or another, but we don't always have the tools to pull them off. I'm fortunate to have a career now where I have a one foot in the ministry world and another foot in corporate America, uh, speaking and coaching. And what I've learned is that when it comes to the most important areas of our life, there's levels to it, right? I mean, isn't that true? I mean, have you ever just met someone that you thought was wealthy until you met someone wealthier and you just thought, oh, so there's, there's levels to this thing. Or uh, you ever thought that you were in shape and you're feeling really good about yourself and then you meet somebody that's in like shape, shape. It's like, oh, like there's levels to this thing. One, one month I was doing a running challenge, okay? And I, I challenged a bunch of people. I said, hey, we're gonna run 50 miles together, all right? So I felt really good about my 50 miles. I said, I'm doing what, I'm in shape. I did about two miles a day and then I talked to my friends who are actually runners, like they're avid runners, these are marathon runners. They do about eight to 10 miles a day. And I said, oh, so there's levels to this thing. When I think about the different levels and modes that you and I can live in, I think it really boils down to us either coasting or thriving. I found that most people are coasting, they're on autopilot. They're at jobs and in relationships they tolerate. Most people are surviving, getting through, trying to make it another day, another week, another month. But here's the deal. I don't think that has to be your year. I actually think that 2023 can be a thriving year for you if you want it to be. You just have to take ownership of it. You can let 2023 happen as it may, or you could be extremely intentional about the direction of your life. Here's what I've done. I've wrote a book called Leveling Up, 12 Questions to Elevate Your Personal and Professional Development. This book stems from my executive coaching practice, sitting with leaders, professional athletes, and Fortune 500 companies and teams around the world. I've designed 12 loaded questions that I believe will help you take your life and career to the next level. But Here's what I want to do today. Just like I equip teams with those 12 questions to help them grow, I want to equip you with four questions today that I believe are going to help you elevate your faith in 2023. And these aren't four questions I just made up, okay? These are four questions that come from Jesus. Jesus, yes, has a lot of answers, but I'm a fan of the questions of Jesus. I want you to write down each of these questions. I want you to put these, uh, put it as notes in your phone. Um, I want you to keep it in your office. I want you to put it on, on your mirror. Like, let these be the questions that you ask yourself to help you take your relationship with God. And yes, I believe others to the next level. Question number one comes from Matthew 5, verse 47. And, and, and Jesus says this, he says, and if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Now, this question stems from a message Jesus gave in what scholars call the Sermon on the Mount. There's a portion of this message where Jesus attempts to convince his audience and followers not to just love their neighbor, but to love their enemies, which is kind of absurd. Um, Matthew 5, 43 says this, it says, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You were taught, like this audience was literally given permission and were even taught by some sages that it was their God-given duty 
to hate their enemy. That sounds crazy out loud, but we gotta pause and really ask, is it really any different today? We're not only given permission to hate our enemy, we're taught to always have one. Our enemy in 2023 is anyone who disagrees with us. Isn't that true? I mean, you don't, you mean, you mean tell me like, you don't, you don't vote the same as me? You mean, tell me we don't see education the same? You mean to tell me we don't see sexuality the same? You mean to tell me we don't see mental health issues the same? I mean, isn't it easy for you and I to be cool with and show some love to people who agree with us? And then isn't it difficult to be cool with and show some love to people who disagree with us or see things a little bit different? What I've discovered about you and what I've discovered about me is, well, it's easy to be kind to our kind. You wanna know who it's easy for me to show some love to? Sneakerheads, okay? Like, like if your shoe game is on point, I'm about 10% nicer to humans with nice shoes, okay? It just is what it is. To which Jesus would look at me and say, Ryan, of course you are. That's, that's easy. And it's not just easy, it's just like everybody else. Everybody lives their life by those rules. Love those like me and put distance between those who are opposed. Jesus said, if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Question number two is found in Matthew 6, verse 27. Can any one of you by worrying Add a single hour to your life. You and I have a really bad habit, and it's worrying. But Jesus' question is a loaded question because it leads us to ask, what is worrying doing for your life? Like, whether you believe in God or not, you should be answering this question. Because some people's plan for their life is worrying about it. <laughs> like, I don't know anyone who worried their way into a better life. But it's a trap we can fall for year after year. But I don't think it has to be that way. I think this is a habit we can change. James Clear, author of Atomic Habits says, your current habits are perfectly designed to deliver your current results. Isn't that true? Like, I'd imagine that there's some people watching and listening today that aren't happy with their current results. And I would just tell you this, if you don't like where you are, it's wise to look at current habits and make some adjustments. Some of us have worried so long because it's just become second nature for us. Because, let's just be honest, the list of things we have to worry about is incredibly long. I mean. Have you ever thought about your worry list? I mean, relationship status, whether you're single, dating, engaged, married, divorced, or widowed, they're all statuses that can come with a little bit of worry. Isn't that true? I mean, you can be single and worry that you're never going to find someone. You can be dating or engaged and worry that the other person is crazy. You, you could be the crazy one too. They could be worried about you. I mean, you could be married and worried that your marriage will never thrive. I mean, what else is on our worry list? Money, your bills can outweigh your income and that can cause you to just worry. Uh, sometimes it's not bills. Sometimes it's just good old fashioned spending. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, you can find yourself in the land of worry just looking at your bank account. Uh, what else is on our worry list? Health. Do I even have to explain this one? <laughs> you can worry about COVID, influenza, strep, mono, and uh, ragweed. Okay, I, I love when ragweed uh, first entered one of my group chats. I say, hey man, you got that ragweed? They're like, no, that's what my doctor said I might have. You might have that ragweed. I mean, it's just something new to worry about. Uh, what else is on our worry list? Politics. How often do we just sit back and read headlines or watch the news and just worry? about the state of our country. What else is on our worry list? Kids. Uh, I saw a meme the other day that just said, when moms sleep, it's just them worrying about your kids. 
with your eyes closed for six to eight hours. Like, like that's what the beep is. It's like, I'm like and, I, and I just know so many moms, that, that is their life. They just close their eyes for six to eight hours and worry about their kids at night. I mean, this could be its own sermon series because like with kids comes a whole separate list of worries, worrying about their grades and how they perform in sports and decisions that they make and the friends that they hang around with. And it doesn't stop when they move out of the house. I would argue, I see parents more worried about kids when they leave the house than when they're actually under their roof. What else is on our worry list? Business. Worry is all around our business. Working in one, owning one, making a customer happy at one, being a leader at one, being fired by one, getting promoted in one, making partner in one. We can show up to work every day with just a little bit of worry in our hearts. I'm willing to bet that you could add something else to your worry list. But here's the deal. Jesus sees that list and is going, do you think worry is going to help you with all of that? Here's a better option, prayer. I love what the Apostle Paul said to the church of Thessalonica. He says this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray continually, that's it. Like that, that's all it says. Like that's the whole verse. Pray continually. It sounds exhausting because that's like all day, every day. Like that's a lot of prayer. Like continuously pray. But considering how long our worry list is, praying continually actually sounds like a pretty good habit. Because he, here's what I want you to consider doing this year like in a small group or, or as a family, like, like make your worry list. Okay, just, just like we saw a few moments ago, like, like you, you saw the list. I, I want you to go around uh, your table, maybe around the Zoom, maybe around the room and, and just say, hey, what concerns you the most? What keeps you up at night? What do you worry about? And, and, and somebody volunteered to write it down, okay? And, and when it's all over, I want you to cross out the word worry, and I want you to change it to your prayer list. So now what was your worry list is now your prayer list. That relationship status, money, health, politics, kids, business, and you can add whatever you want to that list. And I think sometimes we feel like we struggle knowing how to pray but we're pros at worrying. So what if we just started praying as much as we worry? I think we'd find our faith going to a whole nother level. Like in the moment that you just start to worry about something, that's the moment you just go, okay, let me, that's a warning sign that I need to give that to God. Jesus says, hey, who, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life. Question number three is found in Matthew chapter seven, verse three. It says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? You and I have the same superpower. We are really good at seeing what everybody else needs to work on, okay? Like, here's what my spouse needs to work on, here's what my kids need to work on, here's what my boss needs to work on, here's what my in-laws need to work on, here's what my colleagues need to work on. Listen, our list for how everyone else can improve is rather robust and long, but the list we have for ourselves is rather vague and short. Uh, chapter two of my new book is entitled The Self-Awareness Question. What's it like to be on the other side of me. I just think that we don't pause long enough to ask this question. The minute we start talking about self-awareness, everyone assumes they have it and that they that and they also believe that everyone else doesn't. They're like, I'm self-aware, but all these other people I'm around, they're the problem, which is the irony of self-awareness. Self-awareness is the biggest problem we all have that none of us believe we actually have. But have you considered what it's like to be on the other side of you? Have you considered what the speck in your own eye might 
be? Do you know what it's like to be married to you? Do you know what it's like to be dating you? Do you know what it's like to work with you? Do you know what it's like to share an apartment with you? Do you know what it's like to travel with you? Do you know what it's like to be led by you? Do you know what it's like to raise children with you? Do you know what it's like to be stuck in a group chat with you? Do you know what it's like to be on the other side of you? Some of you might be thinking, man, it's awesome. But I would simply ask, are you sure that it's awesome? I think that you and I should navigate the world with the sense that maybe we've got a speck in our eye that maybe that what it's like to be on the other side of us isn't as enjoyable as we might think. I mean, it could be fun and it could be exhausting. The person that has been teaching me the most about what it's like to be on the other side of me lately is my son. And I've been asking myself this question, like what is, what's the speck in my eye? What's it like to be on the other side of me? You know, it's, I think for my son, my family and my friends, to be on the other side of me is, it's like being with somebody that's always multitasking. And I just, it just hit me the other day. I was trying to play a sport with my son and send an email at the same time on my laptop. And my son literally had to walk over and close my laptop. And I just thought, man, what's it like to be on the other side of me? You're, you're, you're dealing with a leader, a husband, and a father that is, whose, whose mind is kind of all over the place. It's like you're always with somebody that has divided attention. Like nobody gets my undivided attention. It's like they can always see a part of my brain that's working on something else and me not really being present. And for me, like, I just think, man, I just don't want that to be other people's experience. And so for me, I've got to look in the mirror and wrestle with that and go, all right, like I gotta, I gotta take some things to, to a new level. So in 2023, I'm going, man, I'm really, I'm really trying to give people my undivided attention. Like, I've got a list of how everyone in my life can get better. But <laughs> the more I'm looking in the mirror to get the plank out of my own eye, the better position I'm in to even be able to help somebody else. Jesus said, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own? Question number four, and this is, this is the last one. All right, and again, you're asking this question. I think it's gonna help you take your faith and your relationship with God and others to another level. Question number four it comes from Matthew 9, verse 28. And here's what Jesus says. He says, do you believe that I am able to do this? Here's what I don't want to happen for you this year, for your faith to be on autopilot. Like some of us are working so hard to be successful that we've, we've gotten comfortable. And when we get comfortable, we can honestly sing songs about needing God. But in all reality, we don't actually believe that. It's like, God, it'd be nice to have you, but I'm doing pretty well without you. I think some of us have prayed big prayers in the past and we're simply left disappointed. And when it comes to 2023, yeah, I, I hope you crush your personal and professional goals. I hope you meet your physical fitness goals. I hope you get out of debt. I hope you get promoted. I hope you get good grades. I hope you excel in sports. However, it would be a shame if we accomplished any and all of that, but failed to even consider what our spiritual goals might be. Where I'm at with my journey with God is I want my faith to grow. The people that Jesus asked this question to, do you believe I'm able to do this? There were two blind men who came to Jesus and said, have mercy on us, son of David. And Jesus responded with that question, which again, in my mind, is a loaded question that leads to another question, which is this. 
What's the thing that you struggle to believe that God can do in 2023? Like, what do you think that God could pull off in 365 days? In 2023, I believe that God wants to do something for you. I believe God wants to do something through you. And I believe that God wants to do something in you. Like, what is still to be determined is whether or not that we're going to believe that God can and will accomplish great things for us, through us, and in us. But I think you and I got to make up our minds as to going, man, what are we going to do with our faith in 2023? Like, maybe you've got a chronic illness. Maybe you're hoping for reconciliation with an important relationship. Maybe you're praying for uh, your business to grow. Whatever it is, I want this to be a year where you and I pray big prayers and believe that God can and will go above and beyond that. So again, here, here's the four questions. I think if, if you and I are asking these questions this year. I think our faith is gonna to go to another level. Question number one was from Matthew 5, 47. It says, and if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? I don't know about you, but I ain't trying to be like everybody else in 2023. Question number two comes from Matthew 6, 27. It says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? What has worry done for you lately? If, I, if I'm you, I, I decide to, that this would be the year like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my worry list and guess what? That's gonna be my prayer list. Question number three comes from Matthew seven, verse three. It says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? My prayer for you and me is that this would be a year where we can look in the mirror and be able to tell ourselves some hard truths and get the plank out of our own eye, that we would actually be considerate of what it's like to be on the other side of us. And the last question from Matthew 9, 28, do you believe that I am able to do this? Man, my hope and prayer is that this would be a year for you and for me, where we pray some big prayers where we believe that God can do the impossible, that we would be able to look at past disappointments and still with faith in our hearts, go, Lord, I believe that this is a year where you can do great things, not just for me, not just through me, but in me. That's my prayer for you in 2023. God, I thank you so much for our opportunity to do uh, church online today. Um, God, I pray that my friends would wrestle with these questions. And God, I, I pray that as we ask these very, very important questions this year, God, I pray that our faith and our relationship with you would go to a whole new level. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've been encouraged today. We say this all the time. We are not just a friendly church, but a family church. And we want you to know we are here for you. If you need prayer for anything, we would love to come alongside you and pray with you. Simply visit our app and tap the Get Connected button. You'll also find resources on how to take your next steps in your faith journey. Here at City First Church, we are passionate about generosity. And when we give, we are able to impact people globally in the name of Jesus bringing practical help and hope. If you were encouraged today, we would love to invite you to partner with us financially to give back to God through City First Church. Giving is simple. Click the link in the description or head on over to the app. We're so grateful for your generosity. Lastly, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for tuning in here at City First Church. We'll see you next time.